the advice uh, that I would give, like at the movie, I hope it kind of gives is like, you have to know who you are before you can really uh, take care of someone in a romantic relationship. Yep, and it's sometimes, do you also believe in that sort of thing of certain people come to your life for a certain period and they're not meant to stay there? You know, there's that, that kind yeah. of adage, you know, like you feel like they're soulmates and you mentioned it kind of in a movie, but they're just there for a time passing to help you move on or accelerate in your own life. Yeah, the original, like... Lots to figure out after college. Giving your heart to somebody is the most perplexing thing. You can't just decide that you love somebody. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Coop, uh, I feel like I just saw you on like on the screen. It's just kind of weird to have you like yeah. actually here in front of me. Uh, I'm gonna start out by by asking this: uh, Did you think that Andrew had good pickup game? Because I'm like I'm watching this and I'm debating: Is he a good good at picking up and not aware of it, or is he just like this genuine kind of eccentric guy that kind of gets you know at least women in this film like? interested in him. I, I was I, trying to debate. What do you think? I think he's a big dummy and doesn't have good pickup game. I think he uh, really likes to um, dive into people's worlds and he uh, all he knows is like giving older women attention. And so I think that, I don't, because he doesn't end up with anyone at the end of the movie. So I pick up game zero percent but um he yeah i think uh no he doesn't but he had a hookup he, like he had a you know hookup buddy too so it's like well i but those are those sad post college like i, mean, I guess that's, that's, that's that would be sad what they call sad at sad. least yeah. right she, i mean she, oh, they had so i'm trying to make guess. a case for andrew <laughs> here <laughs> I won't argue with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, he's like, I think he's doing something right in, in that aspect. You, you write, direct, act. What's your strongest skill set? Because I feel like you nailed it all in this movie. Uh, what do you feel personally is like your strongest skill set when it comes to those three entities? Well, I've only directed for a total of like 35 days. So, and I've only acted. That's quick, for, actually. Too. Right. No, and I, it's yeah. like both movies combined, like th it's truly like 35 days. So, like, and acting the same. So writing, I think I'm by far best at, at writing because mm. I've written much longer. Yeah, I've had more experience. I mean, the acting's pretty good too. So, you know, I guess maybe it's kind of natural because I'm like, this dude must have gone through heartbreak in real life to write that, you know? Sure. Like, yes. you need to experience something to know it that way, you know, and the way it hits you. and how life is messy and it's not always like a picture perfect ending. Yeah. Like, did you draw upon like actual real life breakups and like heartbreaks uh, into this? Cause I'm like, was there specific like cases that you, you took away from to put into this movie? For sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You think uh, you would be good at giving advice about love? Cause I feel like people who've been through like heartbreak and stuff kind of know at least what to avoid. Right. So yeah, I think I, the advice uh, that I would give like at the movie I hope it kind of gives is like you have to know who you are before you can really uh, take care of someone in a romantic relationship. Yep and it's sometimes do you also believe in that sort of thing of certain people come to your life for a certain period and they're not meant to stay there you know there's that, that kind yeah. of adage you know like you feel like they're soulmates and you mentioned it kind of in a movie but they're just there for a time passing to help you move on or accelerate in your own life. Yeah, the original like, the original pitch for the movie was two soulmates helping each other get strong for different phases in their life, and that was the crux of um, the core relationship and knowing that they won't be in each other's lives for forever. It's sad ultimately, but it's also when you look at it from like a. A different perspective it's also helpful right I helpful, mean it's kind of crazy like helpful and there's some I, I think there's some sense of relief too there's yeah. I think those tears at the end that Andrew is crying aren't solely because 
yes, he loves Domino and Lola, and he's going to miss them so much, but I think there's a deeper thing going on with uh, Andrew finally hearing from this person who it embodies, who is Domino, but I think embodies a larger issue he has, kind of telling him, like, go, you only have you, go figure out who you are, and you don't need to worry about my happiness. And I think that, uh, I love that aspect of the movie. Also, you know what I love about your career is that you created your own stuff. You know, it's like a lot of actors just go out there and look for agents and just kind of stuck in this world of auditioning and never getting anything, getting down. You pretty much done like a handful of credits, but you created your stuff and got to this level this quick where we're, we're doing press days and talking. Like, did you want to approach your career this way from the start? Like, create your own stuff and hopefully you know, we get picked up and you can cast yourself in that instead of going through like the actor or writer realm of like, you know, constantly submitting stuff, you know, the ups and downs of roller coaster ride. I tried that with acting. I, mm. I, it's just, it's, it's very, um, it's very hard and very bleak. And um, I didn't set out to do all of the things, but I think slowly I realized the cavalry isn't coming, and uh, I, I've always been a writer, but I really wanted, like with my first movie, I was dying to have someone direct it. Who, mm -hmm. well, I never thought I was gonna direct that movie, and after the 10th no, I realized no one wants to direct my college love story, so <laughs> I have to do it. And then I learned that I wanted to be a director really on like the fifth day of that first movie. Wow. And, um, and so I didn't set out to do it, um, but, it kind of uh, organically, uh, yeah. Trial by fire, right? Sort of yes. thing, right? <laughs> like, hey, no one's like, yes, I gotta pick up, this right. is my script after all, you know, that way too. Yeah. Wow, that's unbelievable. You know, and going forward too, do you, do you anticipate kind of wanting to write your own stuff and keep this sort of path that you created for yourself of writing and acting in it like what do you kind of see or you want to branch off to more acting specifically like where do you see yourself going i'll always want to write yeah. uh, and i think i so my next movie i wrote and i'm going to direct but i definitely won't act in that and i think i'm gonna i, I won't say i'm never gonna act again but I, I think for a while i won't be acting and i'll just be focusing on writing and directing interesting I mean, I think you can do it all. As far as Dakota, was there other actresses that you were still considering? Is that like a dream list item? Like, how do you cast someone of that in, in a sense in your movie, you know? like Well, Dakota was there from the very beginning. So it, we didn't even, it wasn't a casting. It was just, I hadn't even written the script and I was oh, wow. talking Prior to her. Oh, wow. Prior Yeah, so yeah. I, I had this character, I had this pitch. We met and, um, and then she was like, I'm in. And so then I went away. I think they thought I had a script. But I, <laughs> so they were like, okay, let's read it. And I said, let me go make sure it's good. Um, and I went away for good a week play. <laughs> and just wrote it. But, um, so that wasn't casting, but for all the other roles, we, they, it was dream casting. Um, but yeah, Dakota was always just, uh, her DNA is all over Cha Cha and like she's Domino and always has been. Definitely. Now you're in Chicago, you're going to look for her <laughs> around here, yeah. right? <laughs> Apparently she's in college somewhere here. Right, <laughs> right yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, let's play a quick game. Cooper versus Andrew. Who's kind of the, the better guy, right? I, I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of similarities here, but better dressed. Who do you, who do you pick? Oh, I don't know. Um, I think Michelle Thompson, our costume designer, would say that Andrew is much better dressed. Um, He's dressed this, for an occasion and job these, too. These aren't even my clothes, so. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, I, I don't know. I like. I think I prefer my own style. Um, I don't know. It's casual and fits you. You know, yeah. I, I see you. Well, in no, this. I feel like even this. Well, this is me, me, but yeah, I like my style when I like go out to CVS. Better dancer. Uh. Better dancer, I think I'm a better. Oh, I think they're both. I, oh, okay. I, I, tried, I didn't try to dance poorly. On, on Are you a dancer? Like, let's say you're in a bar or in a club. Like, I will love, you actually? I love to dance. Oh, yeah. so you I'm will not a that. dancer, no. But I do love to dance, and I, I think I have rhythm. Okay. And 
finally, I guess, better pickup game? <laughs> uh, I think we both have no pickup game. I don't know. I, <laughs> I think the I, knowledge of not knowing that you do, you probably do. You know? No, that's not how it works. But no, I, I think, um, yeah, it's important to, if you don't have pickup game, it's important to know that you don't. That's the first step in having a good pickup game, probably. Then, yeah, realize that. Well, <laughs> you realize you're good at this, so I, I think if not, then I'm, I'm telling you here. So, thank you. Awesome job all around. Oh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. That was awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs>